there's going to be days where you'll be shit or bad at what you're doing. Uh, and you'll be let down. You'll be discouraged. This happened to me a few times here and there, but like, it's a long game, right? It's like, uh, it's, 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 um, like you gotta think in the macro. I know I'm just my Gary V's coming out, but like, <laughs> let's go for it. Do the <laughs> voice as you macro? do this. Okay, <laughs> dude, that was so good. What the bro? Fuck? Like, you gotta, like no, you okay, you have to do this last bit. <laughs> Please um, do this last last bit as Gary V. <laughs> I'll do my best because uh, uh, my voice gets fucking strained sometimes. But, yeah, yeah. Um, like, bro, you gotta fucking post micro content. But like, think in the macro, okay? Micro speed, macro patience. So, like, if you're not fucking posting every day, how are you gonna fucking learn, okay? You're just gonna fucking put yourself out there. It's all about perspective, okay? And just providing value, all right? <laughs> so. Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 16 of the Johnny Rogers Show. I'm very excited to have my guests on today, so please join me in welcoming Nima Naz. Yeah, what's good? What it do? <laughs> How you been, man? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Just uh, standing right now because I got a standing desk, so making use of that. Yeah, yeah. we're going to put that to the test with this podcast. Can't wait. Your, uh, your word for today's podcast was consistency, so uh, why don't you start yeah. off by telling the listeners kind of what why that was your word and uh, maybe why that uh, means a lot to you right now. I believe in trusting the process and uh, just keep keeping, keep to, and keeping on the, the efforts of whatever you're doing, no matter how bad you are in the moment. And in order to do that, you got to stay consistent and just keep trying every day. So that's that's been my motto since the very beginning of just you know doing comedy from the very beginning and till now like it's never mm -hmm. changed with anything in life really just in general like any habits you want to fix any relationships you're trying to like you know improve on or your self-growth it has to the, the main thing is the consistency more than anything and you want to get your videos out there you want to get your you know um get more engagement on your content whatever it is do better at your craft consistency is the only thing is that that in my opinion is the most important more than have anything. you ever had um a time maybe where you weren't able to be as consistent with that like how did you deal with with that or did you kind of just take it in stride of i know how to do this i've done this before and i can get right back to this what was your approach to that yeah i it was when i didn't really have the guidance guidance around me like the the right people around me to kind of keep me on my toes and like continue moving forward um that was the hardest for me to stay consistent was when i didn't have people to talk to or people to lean on when i needed the help so i think also having the the, the people around you and your main five people in your circle is the most important part of of your growth as well so um like for instance for me for example my brother uh having him around and kind of coaching me through a lot of things and just lifestyle and everything like that really helped me to stay focused and on my grind and to stay consistent more than anything. And I think that's really underrated having that help. Um, and a lot of people, unfortunately, don't have that. So I'm very grateful for to, to, to be able to, you know, have that in my own life. Yeah, I think it's important to recognize that. And it's like you said, it's, it's hard to recognize it at first. And uh, especially if you're involving yourself with the wrong people who are perhaps pulling you in different directions and then you feel that kind of displacement of oh i'm not doing the the stuff that i want to be doing because i'm wasting all my time with this but then finally being able to recognize like who you can lean on for that support is such a such a great feeling and then you just see yourself just exponentially grow from that because like yeah. with consistency it's just like repetition you learn you're doing it so many times that you pick up the mistakes so fast. 100%. Whereas if you did it, like if you made three videos a year, you're yeah, going you to, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can't tell if it's good there's or not, there. or yeah. yeah, there's nothing to go off of if there was no any mistakes. 100%. Yeah. The more, I guess you say, I guess you could say the more shots you take, the more opportunity there is to learn from your mistakes and grow. So 
yeah, you can use that for anything in life. Yeah. What was something um, that you that you noticed like early on that you were like making like like a common mistake that you were making early on with your like creating content? Because for those of you who don't know, Nima is huge on uh, TikTok and Instagram. Your videos are absolutely hilarious. Just uh, quick comedy sketches. It's it's using the social media platforms as a comedian the way they should be used. Honestly, I had the same conversation with Rick Rowley about like that's what those platforms should be used for if we're comics, you know, yeah, definitely. entertain people. Right. So yeah. Um, what were the mistakes early on that you, that you noticed? The mistakes were me trying to be like other people, mm. not being myself completely. I was still being myself, but I, I still was trying too hard to like, uh, kind of like not copy, but emulate, what other people were doing as well and just in doing what they're doing kind of I'm going based off that and that obviously wasn't the most genuine at the time and uh, I mean like everyone starts somewhere so that was where I started and I learned luckily early on that I just have to be myself and be genuine and be authentic and then shit will happen for me and I truly believed in that and it started to work out for me after like four or five years finally started to pick up and that's when I knew uh when you when you're the more you're yourself the more people can read that through a screen and just anywhere in, in general, and it'll, it'll be more in your favor that way. Yeah. That was like one of the main reasons why I wanted to start this podcast was because with my work that I do on uh, inform overload, people that are like perhaps fans of that news channel are getting me for maybe three, four five minutes. Like, at, and some people might not even watch the video all the way through if they're not interested in the information, but I'm like, for those people who do want to follow me now, I can give you like hours upon hours of just genuine conversation and me just being curious with other content creators. hundred percent. That's the and, way to do it. I do. I love podcasting. It's, it's what, like <laughs> such a sick time to be alive. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's all, it's a great, it's a great, um, what's it called? Like a, just a great platform to provide context and perspective more than anything. Yeah. It, it yeah. Really you can really clear the air on something. Clear the air. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's, that's also why I also do podcasts for that reason is, you know, like you said, people see you for three, four five minutes, right. At a time, same thing with me, even shorter. So like they have only a few things, few small clips to judge you off. And that's why there's always miscommunication. There's always lack of context and people jump to conclusions that way. But if you listen to the podcast, you're like, oh, okay, this guy actually has a reason why he's doing this and a reason why he did that and blah, 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 whatever. The list goes on. Yeah. And, and that, it shows your intention too, more than anything. And it's cool for like the hardcore fans who want to know like the behind the scenes yeah, stuff exactly. or know like what the next big sketch is that you're going to do or right. maybe series idea. Exactly. And it gives yeah. that time too to like interact with those people and come up with uh you know, new sketch ideas. Like your yeah, latest uh, letters to Santa was just yeah. so good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. That, that was a fun series. Yeah. I, uh, it, it gets to a point where like I'm trying to expand more and more every time but different characters and different accents and impressions and all this other stuff. Um, but sometimes it actually, it's, it's become like too much where it's like, there's too many things to do. So I just, I need to just find that out for myself. And that's, like I said, I'm still learning along the way. And that's one of the things I learned is like, I can't always do every single character each series. Right. Because yeah. then it becomes like, it's too, uh, there's no fun in that as well, because there, there's just like, when there's too much of something, it kind of loses its value. So yeah. from now on, I'm like, okay, if I do another series for like um, certain holidays or whatever that comes up, that's a special event, I'll be selective. I'll maybe even make it more fun and engage with my audience and make it more interactive and be like, oh, make it, make it like people. a draft pick, like a draft lottery. Oh, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Be like, yo, okay, there's eight spots for this, yeah. like uh, Valentine's Day, for instance, for example. Um I need everyone to vote for this between this character and this character who goes, who stays, you know what I'm saying? Like, that yeah, way like who do you want to see? Who do you want to yeah. see more? Well, who do you want to see the most? Out of the yeah, two? Then then you do like a bunch of those and you get the best eight and then, and then you do that. So that way it keeps people on their toes. They, they wait for, if one of the characters they want to see this round, they didn't see, maybe they can see it for the next time. So they keep sticking around. They still, they still want to see what's going on. And on top of that, obviously like, you post some other shit too. It's not just the characters and stuff. Like it's yeah, anything yeah. that really 
for just I'm just speaking for myself because it's specific to comedy, but anything that I find funny, I'm still gonna post along the way. It's not just the yeah, access of course. Impressions. You have different jokes, you have different one-liners, different you know. Because uh, it's know, you, things. right? That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing that like I um a trap I think a lot of creators fell into was like they pigeonholed themselves with like a type of content, like a genre almost. And then they felt trapped within that, like, oh, I got to only post this style. It's like, no, just post yeah, yourself. Yeah, that's it. Like yeah these, exactly. These people are there to see you more than anything. Yeah, 100%. And that's true because, uh, and that's another reason uh, why I don't ever po- post. Like a lot of people, comedians and creators or whatever, they always put the description of what they do in their bio. I never post that because I could very easily be like, oh, Neiman, Neiman as Canadian, but of, uh, and then like, um accents and impressions yeah accents and impressions whatever like king or like uh fucking yeah, yeah come whatever, up with whatever yeah whatever yeah, yeah, name yeah. right because a lot of people do that but i'm like i'm not gonna like bottle box myself in into yeah. one hole of content like you said because that's only gonna make it harder for you and people are gonna get bored of it quick and mm-hmm. so that this way when i just don't put anything people are like there's a little bit of mystery They're like oh what does this guy do oh he does this but he also does that and then this every day is different right so like he keeps people interested to, to stay yeah. that's why like so, people like 50 cent can like sell water you know that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and so people will in. buy it because they're like oh, i just like him. him as a guy he's just a cool dude <laughs> exactly yeah it's just brand man this is brand awareness and growing your brand and that happens by being yourself over the whole time yeah what's uh what's your like next big like this consistency is always you know leading to getting better at what you're currently doing in the current craft that you enjoy which is you know comedy whatnot but what's next what's on the table for you that you want to um, be more consistent with uh, something so in your life you of, think you need yeah, to be more consistent a, with there's a, there's a lot of um it's not just on camera shit it's a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that is important more than anything is the behind the scenes stuff so like your habits um because one thing i realize is if if me as a human being i'm not 100 percent healthy then how do you expect to be 100 percent as a performer on stage on camera on whatever so that's also what i've been very strict on the past two years and even still struggling with certain things like my sleep um my when i like you know like sometimes it's hard for me to like wake up right away and like get get shit be more productive in the morning um i don't know little things like um not checking my phone up until a certain point in the night like after like 10 p.m like shut up blue light off start to like wind down like you know stuff like that because like blue light after 10 p.m or even 9 p.m is like it's more it's very detrimental to your sleep and affects your the 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 deepness Mm -hmm. of your sleep and the quality of it and so that's something that i've been struggling with my whole life and that's something i need to be more consistent with and like doing every single night and being adamant on actually making it happen and um not like screwing around with that stuff and also like you know i feel i feel like mindfulness in the mornings is very important to get your day started so uh, as a comedian like like every day i'm I'm like I'm i'm posting daily content at this point so that wouldn't happen if I didn't take care of myself mm-hmm. first in the first few hours of the day, because like, I can't just wake up and start filming shit. Right. You got to get your mind right first, then your body. And then you can start getting to work mode because if you don't, you're fucked and you're going to, you're going to spiral off into darkness and just, it's going to be too much chaos. And that happened to me two years ago, which caused me to like just have a crash and burnout. And I had to take a whole month off of everything. Yeah, and talk so, about and, that. yeah yeah in order to mm-hmm. you know pr- avoid that you gotta be consistently working on the habits at the same time as doing your work too otherwise like i said you just you end up burning out and no one no one no one wants that no yeah. so uh, i think like the first two three hours of the day is 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 made for you just like not checking phones and shit like literally um either meditation journaling writing in your planner writing out your to-do list um i don't know what you what your goals are for the day what you want to achieve all that stuff like writing shit down helps a lot reading learning something yeah listening to an audiobook going for a walk you know what i'm saying like the list goes on right uh working out um and that will set you up for for a strong and a full day of being 
productively and effectively doing your work. And so that's just something that's I want to be more consistent with, which I have been doing, but there are days where I, where I slip a little bit, but yeah, fine, of you know? course. Hey, I think the important part is like the self-awareness on that stuff is just like yeah. understanding that you at least need to do those things. Cause there's some people that don't even have the tools to know that those are the things they need to be doing to feel better. You know, yeah, if you, exactly. if you at the, at the very least have the tools to understand how to feel better and you're just like, Oh, I just need to be more consistent with that. You're already halfway there. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, yeah. it only happened because of the fucking days and weeks, the months of it being hammered into my head by my brother and which who is somebody that's around me who actually can call me out on shit mm. and vice versa and that's yeah, what that's i mean important. by having the people around you that's really important um like, like like i said i'm very lucky to have that uh but if not then yeah there are people where you, that you can seek help from that's on that that are in front of your screens like you know there's people who do mindfulness on on their social media pages or on youtube and you can follow that stuff um, and I don't know, there's just so many more resources, especially nowadays with all this technology expanding exponentially. There's just so many resources to use. Um, and it's a shame to like not take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Especially like if it, it's just a matter of typing in what you're, what you're feeling into Google and then just having like a two second look at what could possibly help you. Right. Um, yeah, I want to hear more about this spin out though that you had to take like a month off though yeah did you just burn in the candle at both ends uh yeah um so this was actually the beginning of the pandemic mm. so pretty much like three years ago almost um yeah it's been three years march 20 march 2020 20 sorry yeah two years oh almost two years yeah, yeah. march 2020 almost two years yeah um yeah so uh, that was b before the pandemic hit. I was starting to actually pick up on doing more stand up at the time while I was doing the daily content still, but like I was missing days on my content. I was slacking on that. I was, I was doing like, like a mini tour, like within Canada, um, not even in Canada, like just in Ontario. I was in like Montreal, Ottawa, um, and a couple other places. And I was at a point, sorry, no, before that, I was actually in the States. And it was my first time doing stand up in the States. And like, I don't know, I just felt like I let that kind of get to me and get in my head of like, oh, I'm doing, I'm doing stand up in the States now. Like, this is fucking sick. This is cool. I'm cool. Um, I'm, I'm making <laughs> shit happen. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have um, confidence, man. Of course. Yeah. You, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, it feels good you know, to be able to like yeah, yeah. achieve shit like that. Right. So, but it, because it's so new, you don't know how to handle that first. So, um, at the time, I was just spiraling off with my diet. I was eating like shit. I was sleeping like ass. I was obsessed with my phone. I, like I was addicted to my phone and like social media, especially. And I was starting to lose sight of why I'm even doing this in the first place. Mm. Um, and I was like talking to a lot of girls and like getting all this attention, right? Because it's all new to me, gaining a following during this whole process. Mm. And all this shit just comes at once. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so I didn't know how to handle it. I was very naive and immature to, to what was going on. So I didn't know how to handle it. And that just caused me to just let go of myself pretty much on every aspect of life, my physical health, my mental health, my comedy. I wasn't trying as much. I just thought like it was just coming to me. Right. Because like you get complacent, you get like you get mm. comfortable and that's the dangerous part. And and then you just think, oh, no, I'll be fine. I'll be fine until you, know, you fucking naturally burn out. And um, also there's people, there's someone who will eventually call you out on it and that happened to me luckily obviously it's hard to hear at the time but it's now i look back and i'm like if that didn't happen i wouldn't be where i am now and i'm very happy that that happened at the time because i was well needed and it shaped me into a way better person to this day so um yeah but like that none of this would have happened if i didn't continue to try to get better and put the effort in every day no matter how bad i was or how unhealthy I was or whatever was going on. Uh, I, I just tried every day and little by little made progress and that's it. So that's, I think that's, that's the most key. important thing is just like, even if it's a little bit of progress, it's just compounding that on top of uh, each other, right? Like even if it's just yeah. one thing every day that you're doing towards reaching that goal of whatever it is, whether it's pulling yourself out of this hole or, you know, creating a good video, 
um, that same thing can be applied everywhere. There, there is this interesting phenomenon though of like when a lot of people get this like boost, this peak in uh, like mass attention, there is, I've, I've heard it from countless people, this like almost it's whether conscious or unconscious, there's this desire to almost like burn it all to the ground and like run away from it all. Yeah. And like, you know what I mean? Like, just like, this is too much. I just want to be, now I just want to go all the way. I achieved the thing. Like you wanted the thing. Don't get me wrong. You wanted it. Right. That's why you went after it. But then when you get it, you're like, oh, this, this is too much. Like, I know this is a lot of pressure. For sure. Well, like that's when, that's when people get complacent and they just kind of give up or they, they stop Mm. trying as hard as as they were in order to get to this place in the first place. Um, And and also with, with that comes judgment too from people uh, around you, especially in your own personal life, but also online, you know, with, mm-hmm. with if you have an audience too, it's like even harder. Like um, people will notice these things and like the more judgment and hate you get, it can definitely take a toll on you, but you have to learn to just understand compassion and realize that a lot of these people just are very sad with their own lives and they just want a reason to take it out on other people who are doing better than them or succeeding Mm -hmm. more than them. So um, once you have that mindset going forward, honestly, like everything becomes easy and you don't worry about other people's opinions. And that's the most freeing thing. Yeah, dude, this, I think it was after I read the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Oh yeah. yeah, I read that too. Manson, dude. Yeah. That like that's a game changer because when mm-hmm. you fully and like when you read the idea you're like this is so crazy. I can't imagine like not not caring what people think about me. How do you do that? Yeah, I, know, I don't I know. get yeah. that. That yeah. seems soulless. But then when you really settle into it and you do stop caring, you're like, "Oh, this is great." <laughs> like I've never been more free. I just don't read yeah, any sure. of the comments as long as I'm fulfilled. <laughs> my loved right. ones and my friends know who I am. They know I'm a exactly. good person. You know, that's right. all that matters, right? Like it is. 100%. It's just, are you having fun? That's it. I know. Does it, you know, at 100%. the end of the day. Because yeah, it's what like, exactly you said. It's that small percentage who are going to comment something shitty and it's because they're having yeah, yeah. a bad time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I just feel sorry for those people because yeah. they have a lot of sadness in their own lives. So um yeah you have to realize when people write that judgmental shit about you or um, whatever to you it's um you know it's not they don't have full context on who you are as a person and you're they don't know your intention of why you're even doing this in the first place so they they can't even they can't even understand what you're trying Mm -hmm. to do because they just, they just don't get it, which is fine. I don't blame them, but that's that. But that should make it easier for the person to understand. Like, oh, okay, like obviously they don't, they just don't know. So it's very easy to block it out. Um, but also, like, I, I mean, I follow the the Gary V school of thought. I don't know if you know Gary V, but yeah, of course, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> uh, he, like, I, I actually I do impressions of him too. Um, and it's very fun, but I actually love the guy because he's changed my life in many ways in terms of like showing that like he gets hate all the time, but he talks about how, um, I see, I see that I, I don't, I don't see the negative or the positive uh, mm. comments because, because if you just block out the negative and focus only on the positive, then it becomes toxic positivity and you start getting into this like whole you start believing this shit about yourself. Shit, believing that exactly, you start believing that you're the best, you're the fucking man, you're the king, and then that's when people naturally will start to like try as hard because they think, oh, I'm already sick, I'm already amazing, right? So he says like, don't listen to the negative or the positive. Read it and acknowledge it, and just see what's happening. But just keep doing you and keep moving forward, and that's all that matters. As long as you stay happy and you're enjoying what you're doing and having fun, nothing else matters at, the, at that point. And always just try to keep doing better every day. So yeah that's the best advice i've ever heard so i know man like i i tell everyone the exact same thing of just like uh, everyone in terms of like all all the different youtubers that i've met just from doing this job with the studio um because a lot of people um because i manage the channel so i'll have to manage like youtube hosts and sometimes the comments do get to them uh positive and negative and you can see like a change in them almost 
And you have to kind of just be like, don't look, don't read into any of them. Like that's, you can't, yeah, you can't believe your own hype. And then you also can't believe your own downfall at the same time. Like all of it has to just be outside fodder where it doesn't really mean anything. It's the person screaming at the TV at home. Do you remember that? Yeah, did you yeah. ever have? Did your parents ever do that? You're watching like a game show or something, and they're yelling the answer yeah, at the yeah. TV. Yeah, of course, <laughs> all, all time. That's the original yeah. comment section. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. That's all it is. They just, they just have opinions, but like, if they were in that position, they would fold immediately. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. They don't know any better. They don't know any better. Mm. Because it's comfortable. Because it's like, oh, like there's nothing's gonna happen if I do this. So let me just do it. Yeah. 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 You got Whereas to be if they're in the spotlight, they're, they wouldn't do it. Yeah, no, 100%. I was going to say, you got to be on one of my favorite shows, The Boys. What, uh, The Boys. Yeah. That was sick, <laughs> what was yeah. that like? What was that like filming that? It was cool, man. I mean, uh, that was the f- fun fact. That was actually the first ever acting gig I booked uh, after my first ever audition. That's wild. After getting an agent. Like, literally, I got an agent. It was just like week three in after, a row. Got an audition. Two days later, I got the call. You booked the role for the show. I'm like, wow. what the fuck? And I'm like, yo, my career's going to take off right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> and, At that point, like, you would think. Like, you're like, yeah, you would think, right? <laughs> and then, I, and then I, I actually got another commercial book that the week after it. I was like, yo, I'm on a fucking roll. Um, like, this is sick, right? But then it quickly died out. Literally, like, after that RBC commercial I did. I literally haven't booked shit. It's been three mm-hmm. years. I haven't booked anything. So you never know, right? Just Dude, like that's a, the acting lottery. That's literally just how yeah, it goes sometimes. I know. It started off great and just it's been just train train wreck this whole time. Up that's why that. applying like creating your own thing is so yeah, important. It's, it's important. Yeah. It that's, kills me when I meet these like actors who are just that. They only yeah, act. Yeah. You or can't anything. just do that. Even stand up, even stand up, yeah. like it's like you can't just. Oh, make the pure stand-up. stand-ups who were like are like, I don't have social media. I don't know. Yeah, like, they're so bitter, so bitter. <laughs> so that's like, a weak mindset. Weird. It's a weak mindset. You're never gonna make it anywhere doing that. So, Mm-mm. are you, you gonna to try to get into this so... uh, new like uh, metaverse thing? Yeah, because I would I, say, I don't for, know, man, I have dude, no idea what the fuck's going on. But stand up in the metaverse would be wild. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know. Like. It's 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 already been so weird doing Zoom shows and like Zoom gigs and shit like that and like I don't know I'm not really for it because it's not the same of, of course as being on live on stage and for a real audience of and course feeding off the energy but hey man at some point you gotta adapt to the world and they're not the world's moving on whether you like it or not and so once you once you have that mindset it's like very easy to just like quickly change your mind or like just quickly make the decision to just all right I gotta do it I gotta do it and then just just go just do it just go for mm. it so if, when the, i don't know whenever the metaverse comes along that where stand-up is doing is on there like i don't know yeah i'm sure i'll fucking do it but yeah uh i don't know it's super weird to think about i have, I have no idea I, like anything about it right now but it, it seems like it's happening fast and i keep seeing this like uh these old videos coming up of like bill gates in interviews trying to describe the internet and everyone's like making fun of them and saying like oh the internet's a fad and whatever and then it takes over and i'm like people are saying that shit about like metaverse web3 like crypto nfts, NFTs like yeah yeah, yeah 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 exactly it's, it's like i don't want to be one of those people that are sitting no. around being like no this is gonna be a fad it's like no this is no, probably gonna, gonna be happen. the future in the next few years too yeah yeah it's happening fast the shit's going up exponentially so i know i've already it's already too late for me to get in because i've already gotten like the uh the instagram spam like nft uh, accounts (laughs) being like please invest in this crypto punk like no get out of all the time bro i know i'm like it's too late once these things are being sent out it's already too late (laughs) it's already happening yeah Yeah. exactly yeah i don't know that's that, that world is so confusing to me but I mean, at some point you got to learn about it. So, I mean, as a, like the concept that you could like, I think Gary Vee was talking about how every transaction could be an NFT. Within your community. Yeah. It's, it's not, there's no like third party anymore. It's just like, literally you could be your own, like, like the, uh, what's it called? Connection between the people. Like yeah. they can fund your whole movie, for instance, like. Like people, like you can have a hundred producers on a movie you want to make. Yeah. Like those people like 
buy like I don't know, like, um, so weird. buying NFTs and shit, and like you know, investing in NFTs on your project or some shit, whatever. And like, like I just I mean, think of like, what if, there. what if you have a comedy show and every ticket that you sell is like a unique NFT? Yeah. And then essentially, like, if you all of a sudden now get signed to, I don't know, you you do like a big Disney movie or something. Well, now the value of the Neiman Naz NFT is going to go through the fucking roof as people resell it. And like, this is an original ticket from one of his first shows and it's dated and it's like a unique coding. Um, You're kind of creating your own nostalgia pieces. Like everyone can have their own baseball card now. Yeah exactly exactly yeah that's all it is it's it's more personable collector's items like yeah that's the best way to describe it right yeah people can own a part of your project or some shit they can be Mm -hmm. owners of a part of your project like stocks like buying stocks yeah yeah, exactly yeah like yeah i think it's actually more in our favor now like with nfts like like Mm -hmm. it'll be born in like people creatives favors because oh yeah yeah especially graphic to, artists oh yeah oh man you don't you have to make go some through anybody. Sick something yeah you yeah. don't have to go through any art galleries or nothing you just create your own nft and the more times it gets resold the more money you make exactly. what's that people people crap guy he made like 69 million or oh something oh my god off the painting like <laughs> it was Jesus so crazy Christ. 69 like, million dollars imagine if the mona lisa was was created during the nft era like yeah it was just the like one. like the same amount of time from when it was created to now but like imagine at the start they had nfts the value of that nft would be astronomical it'd be like that's trillions that's what i'm saying so that's why wow. nfts will, has the opportunity to make more people rich yeah so. which is just like and it's it's just again it's just what like sharing wealth it's yeah, just, I, I don't know, man. I mean, it's, it's just it's such so, a tiny piece. Like it's yeah. like such a tiny amount, but given to each thing, it's stacked up. Again, it's the kind of little bit by every day stacked on top of each other makes a yeah. lot. <laughs> it's it's a little confusing still, and it's so new for me to even fathom. But like, I'm open to whatever at, at this point. Like, I don't know. I, I've I've seen the people talking shit about Tumblr and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. And all this shit and every single time the internet wins so yeah you just gotta Dude, like you just gotta accept you, it you can't be dismissive of any platform for that matter like i i give big credit to the people who were like when only fans popped up they're like i'm just gonna no. start putting shit on only fans not even like nude content or anything sexual they're like just content <laughs> i know yeah yeah they're like, I'm now, just going like, to use their model. <laughs> it's legit. Now people are there on there just finger blasting and like you know <laughs> doing crazy shit and making millions in Vegas, yeah, millions. Being, like fucking traveling all over the world just for showing titties, like it's crazy. But it's a good time to be alive for that. I mean, like I, I think the alive. pandemic made a lot of money for a lot of people, not a lot of money for some people, yeah, which true. definitely sucks. But like, if also, you were able to take advantage of that online market, then hey, it's there for you. Good. And and for people like me, it helped. It really made me not a lot of money right now, but made me a lot of opportunity and audience. And I gained a lot of opportunity and experience and audience and engagement mm-hmm. to, to fuel me to make money, money in the future. So yeah, the pandemic was definitely a blessing in disguise for me. And uh, a lot, of, I feel like a lot of creatives who took advantage of it too, because there were yeah. a lot of creatives who fucking still did nothing this whole time and it shows because they're not doing anything anymore and um they're they're blaming it on the pandemic and i'm like no it's like oh there's so many resources for you to use and you're not doing anything about it so how can you even be complaining right now yeah 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 and it's it's just it's sad to see like the time wasted complaining could be used doing something about the situation And it's like the tools are right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My guy. Very you just simple. gotta reshift that focus. Like yeah. it's hard like, to watch. A lot of people are just uh like I said, complacent doing what they're and they're also scared to take the risks of putting this, themselves out there in a different way than they're used to. But I don't know. That's that's, the, I think that's the biggest thing is the fear, maybe uh, the fear of judgment, perhaps I think holds a lot of people back, like judgment from yeah. their peers. For sure. Um, 
to which I just say, like, maybe you're surrounding yourself with the wrong people. Wrong and people. If you don't think you could be yourself online because you think your friends are going to judge you. You got the wrong friends, man. You know, like you need to exactly. surround yourself with people who are more supportive then. Yeah, 100 percent, man. That's the way to do it. Um, I tell everyone that, but it's only the people who are willing to sacrifice a lot of shit in their lives and actually have a passion for it to actually act upon it. So mm -hmm. it's very little, very little amount of people. Yeah. That's the biggest thing too, is just, I think like you have to have locked in on a passion. I think you could tell people what to do and like what they should be doing, but if they're not, if they don't have, if the thing that they're, you're telling them to do is not something they're passionate about, then that's going to show as well. Like they could be doing all of the right things, but the work is not going to be good if they're not passionate at the end of the day. No, no, exactly. And it's going to yeah. show. What, when, uh, cause stand up was your first kind of like introduction into the world of entertainment, but like what made you want to be a stand up? As corny as a question as that may be. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I, I wanted to do it all when I first started to do comedy because I dropped out of university uh, before I even started to, 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 so I could pursue comedy in general, whether that be videos or doing funny stuff online, doing stand up comedy, sketch comedy, acting for TV, movies, like all that stuff. Um, and so I just had a passion from the very beginning, pretty much. Like I, I've always loved watching other people do stand up online. And I, I went to a couple of shows before that, before I even discovered that I could do it. And I fell in love immediately. And I was like, wow, if I, if I could, if these people can be up on stage and do jokes that are half ass and not that great and people are laughing, like I for sure can go up and do some shit. That would be fun. And like, I, I, I knew it was going to be a long grind and like, I'm going to be shit off the bat and like, it's not going to be all sunshine and rainbows right away. But because I had such a passion for it and I still do to this day, like, I don't care. Like, I, I just want to like get better every day. And if that meant doing shit most of the time, but improving each time and then eventually having proper materials material to like kill on stage then yeah like it's all worth it to me and yeah it's <laughs> the funniest though is like and i noticed this in a lot of people is the uh the what made them want to start is seeing someone do stand up and thinking i can do better than that <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and having like the confidence in that thought alone of and have never have done the stand up before yeah, yeah. it's like 100%. you gotta go through with it at that point you gotta like, you gotta you gotta try that yeah. that's what i'm saying I'm any like, so moment where confidence just pops out like that it's like take advantage of that take moment. advantage i know uh -huh. yeah and like I, I like for some reason i was very self-aware of that in the moment of my life i was you know i was only 19 at the time uh and i don't know for some reason i just had that confidence in me naturally but i didn't have that for any other aspect of my life which was weird mm. so that's yeah, I was why like I, same I way know. shy up until about like 18 19 and then i was like i'm gonna like yeah be out there more be like a performer instead of no. just being someone in the background 100 percent, yeah and like i don't know you just gotta follow your gut at some point i that was the first time i i kind of realized that I, that I can follow my gut and just do shit for myself yeah not for anyone else it's a liberating right. feeling too right very liberating yeah it's a big risk but i was willing to take the risk because i was not willing to like regret not trying uh, because that would be even worse yeah you don't want that because you see so many cases of that everywhere where you're just like you're like i don't i don't like it may be a teacher you had or something or like somebody in your community where they're always like talking about the good old days and you're just like yeah oh. exactly Oh, I, just, can't, I can't stand that yeah I, every time i think like do i want to do this or not like those people like play in my head and i'm like yep go for it <laughs> exactly yeah that, that repels me man like the thing the thought of like not trying something because like you're comfortable or you don't want to take the risk fuck that like i can't live like mm -hmm. that gotta just do what i want to do and whatever makes me happy and just go for it and just try yeah and if you have consistency in place like we were talking about yeah. earlier yeah it's just going to become all, all the easier. Like you just apply that to the next thing that you're doing. Even if it's yeah. new, it's like the, the outlines are still the same. The work it's ethic is still time. the same. Yeah. yeah. It's only Slight a matter adjustment. Of time. The biggest thing yeah. that I find, which is so crazy is like, yeah, I think, yes, you can take on too much work and be doing too many things and spreading yourself thin. But I've also noticed like there's times where I think like, oh, this is the, uh, this is the amount of work that I'm capable of doing. And then I push myself a little more. And then I realize like, 
oh, I can comfortably actually do more work than this. Mm. Like there, there's like a line that you can kind of play with where if you are relaxed in, but getting a lot done, you're like, well, let me just push it a little further then. Why stop at where I normally stop if I'm feeling good now? You know, exactly. When, when it comes to work, you know, not, not your drug habits, you people that are listening. Yeah. <laughs> Why exactly. stop now when I'm still feeling good? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Don't that's just totally another different. line of Coke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, you know, I, I, it's a passion of mine. <sighs> I always have to make that difference. I'm like, just because I'm saying this and you have a bad habit, don't do it. Yeah. yeah it doesn't mean it's worse for everything. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's when the self-awareness comes in. <laughs> it's not translate. <laughs> no. hydration break all day baby (laughs) (sighs) what's um what's been your like favorite series that you've done so far of uh just like creating creating videos um honestly i really have been enjoying enjoying this christmas series i've been doing it's like one of the best in my opinion that i've done it's the i think I'm, i'm at my funniest right now um more the most creative too and it's all because of the habits I've been putting into place up until this point. Because like, like I said before, the more efficient you are as a, as a human being, the more efficient you'll be as a performer. And so mm. naturally, that's what's happening. My, 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 my eating habits are at the ultimate best it's ever been. I've never felt better. I've never slept better. Um, I've never in, improved on my habits more, um, you know, like all all this shit like i haven't worked on my mental this much or my even my physical health so all that comes into play here and no wonder why my content's gotten better because of that reason so that's them that's definitely been one of my favorites um but like the, obviously the, the the original series i started off doing that kind of blew me up in the first place is also a favorite of mine like which i i did like how to say this word in every culture mm, of the city or yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. wherever, right? So yeah, the, uh, th- those videos were also very fun. Um, I also yeah. enjoyed the ones with your mom too. That was great oh, yeah, that you yeah. included her in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, all the dances I do with my mom and shit is fun. You know, I'll, yeah, I, I think that all, family man. aspect is great, man. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. That, that's the thing. I, I feel like it really um separates me from certain people who might push the boundary a lot which is something I guess I'm doing at this point in this day and age with the racial stuff. It's like cultural stuff. It's very sensitive. And I still got have people calling me racist every day. Um, or like, Oh, you're this and that you're, um, you know, you're homophobic that you're racist, you're this and that when I'm just making jokes. Right. Um, but then when I have my mom in my videos, I feel like that really like balances things out because they're like, all right, well, like, he's God, not, he's got complete. a mom. I mean, he's, he's got a mom. Are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a mom. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> oh, she sorry. looks very lovely. She's very funny. She's lovely. And like, they get along oh with her. Like, they're, they're like best friends. So like, it kind of like take, brings down the pressure of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the image too. And like, it's true though. Like it's, like, that's just who I am. Like, yeah, sure. I, I'll put sure. I'll fucking do, do impressions of certain people or different backgrounds, but like, that's just how I grew up. And, and that's, and having my mom around in my videos, like that's, that's who we are off camera. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, I'm just, that's, I'm showcasing being myself and that's more notable and, and noble in my opinion, than just like someone who's just like doing like racy shit one after the other. And yeah. Like, yeah. For, it's not like the you know, only thing you do. <laughs> no, it's not the only thing I do other, I sing, yeah. I dance, yeah, I fucking yeah. do different types of jokes. I do serious videos yeah. where I try to help people. So like there's and- more substance to me than, you know, than usual. And the funny, the best part is, is like the the videos are not even, I would even call it like low hanging fruit mockery where, where you oh. would be like, you would be like, oh, that's kind of like hacky. It's not that it's like, right, right. It's, spe- yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's super specific things that only those people from that race would actually understand, which is the target yeah. audience to make laugh yeah. exactly. because that's, yeah. that's what you're trying to be relatable to. So like, yeah. You can tell that there's like actual thought into it if you actually watch the video or if you exactly. understand and these people. But if you if yeah. you at a base level yeah. have no understanding of that culture, then you're like, oh, this is terrible. For sure. <laughs> yeah, you, you'd easily tell. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's the thing. Like I yeah. do my research so much that no one can say shit because I have the proof it's to back down. it up, right? It's all it's there. Down. 
as yeah. yeah thanks and like i take pride in like knowing and being confident in that and believing in that part of myself so like I, if people want to hate on that or like they say i'm racist they go fuck themselves because i don't feel <laughs> that way i don't feel that way i don't feel like i'm being racist i don't feel like i'm doing being misogynistic or homophobic mm. or whatever the Ca- I'm causing doing. harm yeah, causing yeah, harm. yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 bro like i'm just trying to make awesome. people laugh and yeah. that's what makes me happy like i, don't, I have no yeah. other intention that's truly that's all i care about and like just to and be click funny, off Click off. off. Watch fuck, something else. Click off. And fuck off. You know <laughs> click off. And fuck off. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, so I don't. That, that's just. That's it, man. Like. Nah, I feel yeah. you, man. Um, I'm gonna like give your uh promo here for all your socials for the lovely people that are actually watching on YouTube. Shout out people on YouTube. I appreciate that. I need Shout that. Out uh, YouTube. I need those views. I gotta get monetized, baby. So there's yeah, the uh, Instagram, Nima Naz. If you're listening on uh, iTunes or Spotify, it'll be in the description. Uh, same thing on TikTok. And uh, you're still doing straight and curly podcasts yeah, as well? Yeah, my brother, yeah. yeah. Nice. So I will, uh, I'll link all that in the description below. Is there uh, anything you want to say to the listeners? Any last thoughts on the word consistency? Uh, yeah, I mean there's going to be days where you'll be shit or bad at what you're doing. Uh, and you'll be let down. You'll be discouraged. This happened to me a few times here and there, but like, it's a long game, right? It's like, uh, it's, 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 um, like you got to think in the macro. I don't know. I'm just my Gary V's coming up, but like, <laughs> let's go for it. Do the <laughs> voice as you macro? do this. Okay. <laughs> Dude, that was so good. What the Bro, fuck? Like, you gotta, like, no, okay. You have to do this last <laughs> bit. <laughs> Please um, do this last, last bit as Gary V. <laughs> I'll do my best uh, because my voice gets fucking strained sometimes. But, yeah, yeah. Um, like, bro, you gotta fucking post micro content, but like, think in the macro, okay? Micro speed, macro patience. So, like, if you're not fucking posting every day, how are you gonna fucking learn, okay? Just gonna fucking put yourself out there. It's all about perspective, okay? And just providing value, all right? <laughs> So <laughs> it's the hand it movements, yeah. dude. dude. Killer, killer. Yeah. Hey, first applause on the on the Johnny Rogers show, <laughs> yeah. dude. I uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, everyone, go follow Nima. Uh, like I said, if you're listening on Spotify and iTunes, please leave a five star review and a comment down below. Always appreciate that. Share the episode with a friend too. That's always nice. Uh, but until next time, stay classy, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.